Hello and welcome to our clinical research YouTube channel. Today we'll be covering about how to apply for research position. And this is, it, it may sound very simple, but let me tell you from my experience and receiving uh, uh, hundreds of applications every year uh, that there are some rookie mistakes, almost everybody does it. And we've been asked to record and uh, tell our viewers that what are the tips and tricks to apply for research position in America as you are doing your USMD steps or you've done the USMD steps. So first of all, uh, let's spend some time and, uh, and thinking about how you would apply for these things and what it will increase your success rate when you uh, take these things into account. So first and foremost, uh, first and foremost thing would be to do search. Please, 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 before you send an email to any investigator, any PI or principal investigator, mentor or coach uh, to search about them. Uh, you can look at them in Google Scholar. You can look them on ResearchGate. You can look them on LinkedIn. You can look them on Twitter, anywhere, and you'll be able to find that what their research interests are. And you can focus your email into those areas, especially if you're applying in medicine and looking to medicine pertinent uh, the researchers or uh, investigators or your mentors. Same thing for ENT or ophthalmology or surgery or OBGYN or psychiatry, so on and so forth. But please do search about it, what they have done into, and then please show interest in uh, those particular areas. So their chances of being uh, accepted or at least looked over for your applications can be very, very, very high. One caveat is do not do a carpet bombing. I so many times I see emails coming to me or my mentors or my colleagues where you see everybody with the last name with K or everybody with last name with A, whatever it is, they like 40, 50, 100 people they have sent an email to. Somehow they got hold of these names and email IDs and they're just sending it them out. So don't do that mistake. I delete those emails and many of my colleagues do the same way as well. Please send separate or personalized email or at least have the courtesy to BCC, blind CC everybody so they don't know that you have sent a carpet email or kind of carpet bombing in a sense that you are sending it to so many people. So search and don't do, uh, 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 don't do BCC if you're putting it more than one person, but then you'll not be able to uh, send a personalized email to those people if you're checking everybody with last names and all. It, it, it looks very unprofessional at your point. That's what I was talking about email formatting. Don't be a personalized email, put down their last name. Usually in America, you address people with their last name, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, and Dr. So -and -so, uh, in that fashion. Please uh, uh, don't use your first name when you send emails. Don't use full name. You can put down doctor and last name and, and then write down. Email formatting is easy. You dear doctor or uh, hello sir or hello doctor, uh, whatever you want to write it down, introduce yourself, put down your name, who you are as a first and last name. Where are you from? Which medical school you are from? Currently where you are, very important that which medical school and which country you have done your uh, medical school or residency and where you are currently. So that'll give us some idea about the time zone. If they like application and would like to do, invite you for interviews, then please do mention the where you are right now. Tell what you have done so far. Please don't be shy in telling that where you are in your USMLE steps and I have another point as well. And say that you have interest, you looked into these papers or publications or this area of research or this particular website. You can put down if you have uh, gone into the institution website and found out that faculty there. So they know that you have done your research work, uh, your research around that. And tell them that you have interest about these things. Uh, you'd be happy to be considered for research uh, assistant, fellow, trainee position for so and so time. And if accepted, you will be uh, happy to start at that particular time. So that gives them an idea then how soon you're available. Most research program, uh, 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 you can do it in J1 research opportunities. So that may take up to 90 days. So you have to start very early. And please watch our other video when we talk about the timeline when you should start talking about, uh, start inquiring about research in your USMD timeline. Uh, so that will give you an idea that when to prepare for those things. Talk about your strengths. What you'll be bringing to the team. Otherwise, why we should hire you or why somebody should take you. Tell them that what really you're really good at are. It, it doesn't mean that you have not done research that you have no strength. You can tell that what has been your English writing or medical writing has been or uh, if you're good at uh, uh, going through with the charts, uh, 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 countless charts or whatever you feel that will be helpful for your research position, put down as a strength as well. Set your expectations. 
of course this come later during your interview and then watch our videos when we uh, were recorded for how to uh, ace in your interviews for research or uh, residency as well but you can set expectation that you're looking for this duration research training position paid not paid in which area as well so that reinforces your ma ma message and then it tells that you are actually looking for the right person sometimes you end up sending a message to somebody in medicine when you're looking for surgery so that is going to be very important for you to think it through and have a clarity in your thoughts and put down your expectations as well please 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 write down your usmla staff status that where you are done and include your scores. Don't be shy in, in, in including your score. Most research position don't depend on your civil score at all. <coughs> None of them are. Uh, only thing is the most research uh, PIs or mentors will want to make sure that you have done <coughs> that you have done with your uh, score so then you are not burdened with them or the research could be demanding so you are not uh, 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 jeopardizing your scores if you have done all those things. So write down your civil status and write down your scores. Uh, as well that they help your application so if you have a decent or high score definitely put them in there uh, <coughs> as per se however make sure that uh, don't make them write another email asking about your score and status that will kill your application so many times people do that mistake why to hide just tell them you they know that you are coming for your usmles or after your residencies just just play to your strength and write it down last couple points is Please note down that where you are and what's your meeting time look like. You can say that you'll be available every Friday, every Thursday, or these days, or any days from this time to this time, and tell them at which time zone you are in. Because most of the time, if they would take this information in two, three emails, you're already losing several uh, mentors and PIs. They are very busy. They will not have time to take this through if you don't provide all these things because then you're just done everything in one email. And the next thing you know, that they are setting up the interviews with you as your preferred time and duration you're providing. And last thing is please do provide your contact email which you will doing it because you are sending an email anyways <coughs> but be judicious in when you are creating your emails on gmail sometimes you'll see you know, so and so rules and rocks and those things those emails should not they are not very professional most emails are your last name dot first name or last name underscore first name some numbers if you have a very common last first name and at gmail.com or yahoo or hotmail whatever you like for that fashion pay attention to your email your email should be able to tell what your first and last name as well uh, and then it should not be any teenager sort of email you can create a professional email so be very careful about it so these are the steps do a good search be pay attention to your email format as we discussed today play to your strength bring your strength or tell about your strengths set your expectations or at least lay out that what you're expecting from uh, this research position uh, please 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 do include your usmb staff status and score where you are if you're ecfmg certified that's even better prefer your meeting uh, duration time like which days you can meet and which time zone you are in so that it's easy for your mentors or pis to set the meetings with you and pay attention to your contact email it should be professional if not do create a professional email and then do email flow through that email as per se so if you follow some of these things, your chances of getting a research position in America is pretty high. Please write in comments what has worked for you. Please write some more suggestions. We'll be happy to record it uh, in going fashion. If you have succeeded utilizing some of these things, please do a shout out on social media. Otherwise, do subscribe and like our channel and let us know uh, uh, if you want to have even more, uh, more uh, videos to be recorded. Thank you so much for watching.